I'm bringing you greetings from the city of Abuja. My name is Ni Dumade, the founder and CEO of Minecraft Consulting. Um, I'm a pastor, I'm a consultant, I'm an engineer. I was a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the US. Um, it delights my heart to come your way this um, season of your convention, your youth conference. Um, I, I, I want to just pour out my heart this time that is given to me uh, by the leadership of Victory Life Mission International. By the way, I want to celebrate my father um, and my mentor, Reverend and um, Reverend Mrs. Akiola, founder and general overseers of um, Victory Life Mission International. Um, I, want, I don't take them um, lightly. There are people who have played major roles in my life, including playing a pivotal role for me giving my life to Christ in the early 90s. So, um, away from myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor, so I understand what it is to um, lead a church. And also, um, I gave my life to Christ when I was young, uh, in my teenage years. I want to share quite some stories with you. Because I know that as a youth, as a teenager, you want to identify with stories. I want to tell you quite a lot of stories about myself. And that's why I'm trying to introduce myself. I gave my life to Christ when I was a teenager. So I understand the um, terrain at which you are in. And I can tell you that you can navigate that terrain successfully. So in this good conference, um, the theme of the conference the theme of the conference is so peculiar in the time we are living in. We are in a pandemic um, season where, where there's a lockdown, there's a social distancing, health protocols to observe. Uh, we can't go to church. I'm sure the convention would have been so good if we have navigated to church and to have a fellowship together. But because of the pandemic disruptions, we cannot come to church. But that doesn't mean that Hebrews 10, verse 25 cannot be established. Okay? Hebrews 10 says we should not forsake the assembly of our brethren together but we should encourage ourselves the more as we see the day approaching okay so in this youth conference our leadership of the church has given us a team and the theme is spotless okay spotless very 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 powerful very very engaging and i think as a youth you need to be able to look into the concepts of being spotless in your work with god okay and then the topic is what the youth and technology and i told you that i'll be very very practical here i'll be very 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 practical with my own personal stories i'm not going to tell you facts and figures of what technology has affected people outside there but i will tell you how technology has affected me way right when from the day i gave my life to christ the day i was youth trying to walk or try to crawl and try to run and i'll tell you that there's a it's a place that technology has placed in the life of a youth. Also, that's the topic, the youth and technology. How can you use the, the, the technology of today to help you um, grow spiritually, to help you grow physically, to help you grow emotionally? And then the text, I want to read that quickly. Is taken from Ephesians 4, verse 13 to 15, but I want to just add 16 so that we can see things in context. Ephesians 4, verse 13 to 16. And I'll read from my Bible, okay? That's about four verses, and I want to just follow me carefully. Ephesians 4, verse 13 says, Still we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man spotless blameless without spot okay a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we henceforth be no more children see it's not some it's not wrong for you to be a child but when you are growing up one of the things that should should do is this verse verse 14 said that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness where they lie in wait to deceive 
people are in the end time, there's going to, going to be a lot of deception. People don't know that good is no, good is no longer good. People are terming evil as good. People are terming all kinds of things, trying to see, trying to exp, trying to justify the Bible with their experiences. Instead of using the, the, the Bible to judge their experience. So verse 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him. I love that so far. That verse, verse 15, says speaking the truth. So one of the things that makes you grow is embracing the truth. People say what? But speaking the truth in love. Can somebody say speaking the truth in love? Speaking the truth. We are in the days whereby now the knowledge of God will be scarce. The people will not want to hear the truth anymore. People want to have their ears, itching ears to hear what they want to hear. People just want to take in what they want to take in but the truth about this but pastor 15 says but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him that's christ in all things which is the head even christ now verse is, i'm going to add verse 16 for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part may get increase of the body unto the edifying it's of itself in love that's the text that we're given and i want to just go straight into my own experiences bible says god desires that the entire being be blameless okay be with spotless be without blemish okay should not be defiled ephesians 5 verse 27 so god wants this body without blemish without spot without wrinkle and god wants to god 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 wants to get us to a point whereby he can communion near with us he can fellowship with us he can embrace us in his wholeness okay Apple says he wants our spirit our soul and our body to be what blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in First Thessalonians. So please follow me carefully. Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 29, the glory of the young men is their strength. And the beauty of the old men is their gray hair. One of the things I want to just say here is that we need wisdom and we need strength. Okay? The elderly, the aged, they have wisdom in the, in the, in the person of experience and edu education. But the Young men have a lot of strength. And I remember when I gave my life to Christ, there were a lot of us were young at that time, but we had a lot of zeal. We had a lot of energy. Uh, we had a lot of, 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 of momentum. And because of that, and thank God, we were able to put some knowledge together because zeal without knowledge is not good. Okay? So we need the, to combine the wisdom of the aged and the strength because the strength is the life of the church and the future of the church. Once the youth is not a, exhibiting the energy and the life that they've got, there is no how we can get the fullness of what God wants for our church. So I want to tell you a little story about myself. Okay, a little story about myself, and it's so, 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 so. I, I've done this a few times, but I think as a VLM youth, you're going to hear from somebody who is a son of the soil and who gave his life to Christ in the in the same place that you are worshiping today. When I gave my life to Christ in Visual Life Mission International, that at the age of 14, uh, that was a teenage. Yes, many, many years ago in the early 90s, if you can remember, I remember there was a, a, a program called Feast of Abundance. Uh, then there was a young man who was a Muslim f f way in front of our house in Asulan Street in Mafuluku. And uh, I knew he was a Muslim. And I was from a Christian home. We were not really religious. We we're not going to church really. And then I saw that this young man was converted and was going to church as a Muslim. I was touched. I said, "What? Why would this young man as a Muslim? Because at that time, if a Muslim gives his life to Christ, is a dangerous thing." And so I saw this young man give his life to Christ, and then um, he invited me to church. I was so glad that he invited me to church because I wanted to go and see 
what made this man to change his preferences, religious preferences? What made this man to change his attitude? Because I knew that this young man changed completely. He did not change physically, but he changed spiritually. He changed in his attitude. He changed in his preferences. He changed in his likes and 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 tastes that I could see. We were playing table tennis. We were doing all, you know, with our, those young, beautiful days. We played table tennis. We bet with our trousers. We bet with our, 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 our singlet, you know, that kind of thing. And we could see that there was a total transformation in this Muslim young brother's life. We had the same age at that time. And then I went to Victory Life Mission International in one of those major programs. And I gave my life to Christ at the age of 13 or 14. When and then I was a youth, okay. And what you know about Victory Life Mission is it's a green scripture pastors for winners, champions, and 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 and, and you know, and that they're like a slogan that has been age long with Victory Life Mission International. And we're known for word. You can imagine somebody preaching and the person is quoting close to 30 something scriptures. I'm not kidding you. In a whole sermon that time we can listen to someone like one two hours digesting the word going deep into the god's word through the bible studies through prayers and fellowship and then hearing those magnitude of scriptures ah, there was a yearning as a young babe in christ i desire the sincere milk of god that i wanted to grow i wanted to understand my left i wanted to understand my right i wanted to understand the destinies that god has placed inside of me i wanted to understand the workings at which was going on the transformation that was going on inside of me and then i did all kinds of training thank god to reverend abraham Akiola. A pastor, pastor, pastor did a fantastic work of discipleship. In fact, he's one of the people that I know so well. If you follow him carefully, he's so top tight in discipleship. That's why I asked him what are the traits he, he sees. Because one of the things that the church is failing is failing in the issue of evangelism and discipleship. I've done some surveys of many churches. The one of the things, and that is the real core of the church. The core is to evangelize and is to disciple is to evangelize and to disciple and so he has done a fantastic work in discipling a lot of us who are all over the world today doing a lot of marvelous things for god and great things for christ and so he set up a lot of training school i did missions training school i graduated i did christian leadership training school i did decide i don't know if those things are still there today i did discipleship and ministerial training school in fact i have a soft copy on the amazon kindle of dmts manual which i still try to go on because the truth about it is that if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do? One of the things that you need to make sure in life, your whole life must be solid, solid established in Christ. If you are going to stand tall and stand strong in whatever storms of life the, the, the world will throw at you, the, this foundation is Christ and it must be solid. And so in my youthful years, I did all kinds of training, DMTS, all kinds of training, and we did quite a lot of tests. We read so hard, we worked hard so hard to make sure that we know the things that, we, because spiritual things are very slippery, and you have to make sure you are prayerful and spiritual sensitive to be able to digest some of those things in no time. So what am I trying to say? I gave my life to Christ, and there was this yearning to know God more, to know his word more, and to be knowledgeable in the things of the spirit. Despite that all of us were so zealous in, with God, we, I wanted to encounter the knowledge of God. And there is where technology helped me. I, um, thanks to so, a, 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 a sister in the church, um, Sister um, Shadi Oladimi or that Oladimeji, got me a Bible. Thank God to those who gave, who followed me up. Uh, Pastor Rotimi Alade, um, Pastor Alfred James, uh, Pastor Alfred James will come to my house every day. I will open the word and go through. Today we can talk on sin. Tomorrow we can talk on faith. Another one will talk on giving. You know, he went on and on, and that's how my mom was able to 
to commit their, their life to Christ. He, I, I wish we can have more disciples in church. I wish we can have some, a lot of people who can go out to preach the gospel. And that's why I want to use this medium that you can use technology to actually advance the kingdom of God. And so I was yearning to get the word of God. I was yearning to read the Bible from cover to cover. I wanted to know God. I wanted to know his word. I wanted to understand his word. And so look at me in the suburb of Mafuluku, um, very close to the Lagos airport, in a church who is just upcoming. How can I be grounded in the word of God? I, someone got me a Bible, and I started reading. And see, when I started reading the Bible, I will start from Genesis, Exodus. By the time I got to Leviticus, I will get so discouraged. I will get so discouraged and do because when I see blood, I see turtle doves, I see uh, sheep, I see sacrifices, and all kinds of things, I will get discouraged. But the truth about it is that I will go back again and I will read again. I will go back again, I will read again. And I got myself, yearning to read the Bible was so strong. And I knew that the Holy Spirit put it inside of me to go through the Bible because as a, as a youth, you need the working knowledge of the Bible. Because if you don't have the working knowledge of the Bible, there's no how you can conquer the schemes and, and devices of the enemy. In Matthew 24, when the devil came to meet Jesus, okay, and he was tempting him, he had three seasons of temptation. And every one of those seasons of temptation that the devil drew at Jesus in the wilderness, when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says that Jesus said, it is written. You cannot say it is written when you don't know that it is written. When you don't understand that it is written, you don't you don't have the infantry and the gods to say it is written when you don't know where it has been said that it is written. So Jesus Christ overcame the power, the schemes and diversities of the devil by saying it is written, for it is written, and I say it is written, and the devil departed for him. And we need to understand that for us to conquer in this world, despite the changing, changing dynamics of what is going on, the word of God is still constant. The word of God is still sure. The word of God is still relevant. And we need to ensure that we soak ourselves with the word of God. Follow me carefully. I know where I'm going to, and I want you to follow me there. Okay, and so we need to make sure that we get the word of God inside. Because the truth of us is that the reason why a lot of people are shouting today is because when the, the storms of life came, the pandemic disruptions came and squeezed out the sponge of, of our heart, doubt came out, stress, distress came out, fear came out because what is inside of us has all along been fear, stress, and all kinds of negative things. But the truth of us is that faith comes by hearing, and hearing also comes by the, hearing the word of God. And you see, Take, follow me carefully. The yearning of the Lord of the reading of the Bible was so strong. And then I sat down with myself and the Holy Spirit gave me an idea. Then I used to go to Eddie Steele Bookshop when I was in the um, University of Lagos. And I got a Walkman. I don't know if that's what it's called. A Walkman is a small radio for playing cassettes. And you can be able to listen to radio. A small, like a loaf like um, um, Walkman, okay? I don't know if they still do that today, but I bought a Walkman. It was very expensive for me at that time, but because I wanted to invest in myself, I bought a Walkman. And you as a youth, you must be willing to get to invest in your destiny. You must be willing to pay the price to invest in your calling. You must be willing to pay the price to invest in your assignment, to invest in something that will make your spirit to be rich. And so I bought a Walkman bought an earpiece and I bought Bible on tape. All about, that was dramatized, okay? About 52, all from Genesis to Revelation. I give it out to someone, but I bought Bible on tape. I bought it, and then when I bought it, I slot a, a cassette in. I had a Bible plan that was manually, and I'll tell you that these days, a lot of things have been digitalized. I bought that Bible on tape, and I started slotting this tape 
one after the other. And of course, uh, then in the early days of um, my stay in Lagos, I do a lot of preachings in Molue buses. I go all out for evangelism and I'll carry my workman and then listen to the word of God. It was dramatized and dramatized. You could actually literally hear yourself in the environment at which the scenario of where you are listening to. And then as I was listening to the word of God, the audio, I will open the literally logos on front of me and be listening. You could see that this was a way to envelop my attention and my old physical senses, including my spiritual senses, to make an indelible impact in my spirit. And so, I started using a, a reading plan. And that how I was able to use the technology of a workman, earpiece, to be able to read the Bible from cover to cover. In fact, that was a most remarkable achievement I ever had when I was a youth. To read the Bible from cover to cover. Cover to cover by seven years came up again, and I was able to go through that. I can't count the number of times I've gone through the Bible, but I'm going to tell you today that for you to be able to overcome the storms of life, you must be able to ingest the Word of God inside of you. Okay? But that does not mean that I did not go through the crude way as those scriptures were being spoken. Those days I was listening to sermons in the church. I will go literally to the Bible and begin to search the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation to know where those scriptures were. You see, you have to become like the Berean church. Don't always use Google all the time. There must be a balance. I will tell you that some of these, the fourth industrial revolution did not come from the sky. It evolved from the first, second, and third. I'll give you a bit of what that entails. Technology is something that's been evolving. God can give you some wisdom to be able to navigate some good innovations to make life very very easy and so that's how i was able to overcome um reading the bible from cover to cover and so you can now there's a lot of different um, um bible softwares esod is there um you version is there where you can read the bible with the community exchange um, um, um uh, uh, meanings or exchange what blessed you in new version new version is such a very fantastic tool if you have a smartphone you need to install that bible new version and you can just literally go to a bible verse and you can see several thousands of people who have commented about that verse Esod is also a very fantastic interface where it has a dictionary because I can remember those days when I was in IDC. I go to IDC because I go there to study. There were a lot of reference tools there, dictionary concordances, all kind of reference books that were there. And today I've given out all those books because I don't know where to keep them in the house. But my life, my library is now my laptop. My laptop has thousands hundreds of thousands of books and reference books about the Bible. The interface is so superb. And you see, the truth about it is that those days, if I'm studying the Bible with Kong's strong, strong crocodiles, the Bible dictionary, I can be on just trying to study a root word for, let's say, six to eight hours. In fact, prepositions can even mess you up with strongs. But these days, with the eSword, with Bible apps, you can be able to get some root words like this, okay? Technology makes life very easy. We're going to go to also that later in the course of this broadcast. So, what is a youth? A youth is between the ages of 13 and 25. And in Nigeria, we have close to about 50 million of them who are youth in this category. And we need to make sure that this set of people, I know some people who are 40, 50 who are still saying they are youth, but for my explanation, these are the people that I'm trying to deal with today. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa with one of the largest population of our youth in the world. Okay? And we need to make sure that we ground, I mean, establish our youth in the Word of God. In the Word of God. Potential benefit of technology is so enormous for a teenager, okay? Well, my, my son sometimes, you should really meet me. Uh, he wants to goggle, maybe wants to, he has an assignment, he, he has a, a, a word he wants to uh, um, check up. He will tell me, Daddy, I need your phone to goggle. And see, the truth about it is that before they, we had these kind of dimensions, 
Some of us that went to school, we actually too, did not have dictionary, but the kind of dictionary we had, you have to know how to use it, <laughs> okay? So, but I wanted him to understand that there's a, what, they, what they call first principles, so that he doesn't think that life is like this, okay? You know, there's practically nothing you go in on Google that you don't have. Some people take Google as their God because Google always speaks every time they raise a question to them. So we need to understand this benefit of technology, also the disadvantages, so that we don't get ourselves to a, an easy and lazy life without understanding. But I was um, listening to some conversation of those who gave their life to Christ like 30, 40 years ago, how they have been able to study and read for several hours. Right now, the world has come to a point whereby I can open a book in my laptop or my phone and the book will, be, the book will literally be reading to me. Yes, you know, then we're reading. We have the discipline to sit down and read. But right now, the book will be reading to me. All right, so maintain and develop supportive relationships so that technology can actually help you form a right identity in Christ. Help you through self as proper self-expression. Okay, help you through learning. In fact, I can tell you there's nothing you want to learn. But this lockdown has made me to go through a lot of digital courses in John Hopkins University. I did a certification course in the U.S. thanks to technology. Okay, learning is very easy. There's practically nothing you want to learn that is not in YouTube. And if it's not in YouTube, just do it. I'm uploading on YouTube. If, if you want, uh, how can I repair this? How can I do this? How can I um, um, adjust my audio on my laptop? How can I broadcast my church service? Everything is on YouTube. Everything is online. The only thing is that you need to be able to imbibe some digital skills and that is where the world is going to. Tomorrow, if you cannot have digital skills, there is no how you will be relevant. If you cannot have digital skills, I don't know how you are going to survive. Because everything, practically everything is becoming smart. There is smart TV, there is smartphone, there is smart bed, there is smart this, smart that, smart. If I'm one of my friends who were, were friends in secondary school is actually designing, innovating a smart um, power holding meter power holding meter where you can use your phone to load the, the meter or use it to switch off the whole, the whole supply from your phone okay smartphone whereby you, if you try to um, break the the connection it will it will notify the owner so everything is becoming smart smart is such a way that you're watching a tv and when you sleep off the tv just goes off okay it's a smart tv everything is now trying to leverage on artificial intelligence and as a youth you must be able to expand your scope of intelligence i mean artificial intelligence positive intelligence social intelligence uh, people skills your 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 even iq also must be intact so that all these increases in scope of intelligence will help you through proper self-expression proper learning and proper talking and expression you see one of the things where our youth are talking anyhow on social media is because there's something wrong somewhere there's a way at which we can express ourselves and be heard not on social media so that we can promote a sense of belonging. If we throw all the all the caution to the air and you find out that there's no how we can actually talk to our elders anymore, there's no self uh, belonging anymore, there's no self esteem anymore, we cannot stay connected because we have burnt the bridge and with our friends, with our fathers and, and, and uh, diverse um, um, relationship, then we are in trouble. We are the future of the, of the, of, 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 of the nation and we must not do things anyhow. Technology can be good and bad. Technology can be a good and bad. You can actually, I mean, I mean I've seen quite some people who have been enslaved because they are tied up on pornography, on all kinds of things that we're able to. You need to understand the terrain at which you are to get into it so that you don't get lost into it. You see, one of the things I've learned in life is that before I get into something, I must have actually had an exit plan. So you don't go into something and start having an exit plan. Get into something and, and, then, and then activate your exit plan that you have enacted before you got into it.
Because you should realize that bad habits stick longer. It's difficult to break a hold of bad habits. And it's also difficult to imbibe a good one. In fact, as a human being, it's very easy for you to just get a bad habit, one or two practicals, and before you know it, become part of you. While getting a good habit will require you for you to re repeat and repeat that thing for like 90 days for you to be able to get the the, the reading of that good uh, the, the, the result the benefit of that good habit so technology is an enabler it enables you and you need to use that technology as an enabler it's a tool okay we can't say it's good or bad okay it's a tool it's a tool it's a tool that can be used to create quantum enablement quantum enablement so that we can um, get um, result faster without stress and um, cheaper okay look at the industrial revolution in the past we had stages of industrial revolution and the reason why i'm saying this is that i want to tell you a story because i studied chemical engineering from the university of lagos uh, the first industrial revolution ended in 18th century and in 18th century what happened was man was able to invent mechanical production he was able to use water water mill or use windmill or you know mechanical production facility to power powered by water and steam okay and then from there, you will be able to convert steam to other forms of energy, to kinetic energy, uh, potential energy. Mechanical production was the order of the day in the 18th century. And from the first, and that was a wow technology at that time. Our eyes were open, we were happy that life was easier. We were able to do quite some, a lot of things with steam and water. And then in the in the second industrial revolution, which started in the 20th century, this was when there was the concept of division of labor. There was mass production. In fact, you could see that you have fewer workforce. And because of division of labor, there was massive production, like when you are trying to do pins and safety pins, and because, you know, Chinese, Chinese have, uh, were, were pivotal to that kind of concept in the second industrial revolution. And the second industrial revolution, there was division of labor, and it was powered by electrical energy, where you, you, you have some electricity to do quite a lot of things in your house and things like that. We had TVs, we had DVDs, uh, we had uh, all kinds of electronics, uh, electrical appliances, because there was now the advent of electrical energy in the second industrial uh, revolution. And then we got in the start of the 1970s, early 1970s, where we had the introduction of electronics, electronics and uh, for for um, our household appliances, we could see that our ACs are having remote controls, our TV server, and you know, those days where we, get, we didn't have remote control. If you want to change channel, you have to go to the channel to change it. But right now, you can actually use your phone to control the, your, your, your television or, God, or, your, or your DVDs or whatever the case may be. But in the third industrial revolution, that was in the 1970s. There was that introduction of electronics and ITs. For, we had a lot of automation of, of, of our production, where if you want to produce something in some factory, just press a button, there's a lever that carries, and before you know it, quite a lot of things goes on, and something is produced at the end of the day. So there was more of an automated process. There was more of quite a lot of uh, automation in that kind of process. So we took um, division of labor, to using machines and systems to amplify that massive production in a start of the 1970s. And then in the fourth industrial revolution, that's today, yeah, in the fourth, but we, the reason I'm saying is that don't get to understand the fourth industrial revolution without understanding the antecedent, because when something goes wrong, in the fourth, you need to go back to the third. If something goes wrong in the third, you need to go back to the second. If something gets wrong in the second, you need to go back. What I'm saying is that as, a, as, as, as someone who wants to 
take advantage of the enabling lift of technology, you have to go back to the first principles. Because when you go back to the first principles, you cannot get it wrong. So in the fourth industrial revolution of today, we had so much of ICT, tech, uh, information commission technology, we had cyber production, we had internet of things, the internet was, was, uh, was created, computers were created, you know, and now you can have computers as small as my palm, all right? processing big data, doing a lot of virtual things, digital things, write a lot of machines, artificial intelligence, etc. Now, I studied chemical engineering. And when I did chemical engineering, I did chemical engineering in the University of Lagos. And in the University of Lagos, we learned a lot of things in chemical engineering. In fact, one of those things that we learned if we are trying to plot a graph, we are trying to plot a graph and uh, we use broomsticks or French cobs um, in plotting graphs. We quite learned a lot of things from first industrial revolution, second, third, and, and then we learned to use French cobs to you know, get some of those iterations right, though we are not absolutely correct, but that, just to get close to something that is um, correct. So, but then, after studying chemical engineering, I worked in the oil and gas in, 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 in the, in, in the uh, early um, 2000s, and then I got a scholarship by NMPC to, to study Aspen ICs. It's a plant designing software uh, of, um, of that time, and then I, did, I learned Aspen ICs, and I, I saw how you can actually use automation technology in fact you installing that software you installing that software you installing that software can make you literally say that your five years you spent studying chemical engineering was actually a waste but because you that was like learning first second industrial revolution and now Aspen ICs are just brought in the fourth industrial revolution because right in the in the laptop you can actually design a pump with just an interface you can design your entire plant in less than two months you know what you're doing three months but in the designing of a plant from um, the skills of the first and second and third industrial revolution you can be on the designing of your plant for years for years, I mean years, years, but you can see how technology has been able to collapse. In fact, those days, if you are trying to balance a complex equation, it can take you trial by error. Trying you put to you put it in the reactants, you know, it can take you a lot of time trying to balance a chemical reaction. But with the advent of technology, just tell the, I want carbon dioxide and water. It will tell you the products to put into the reactant to, to the, react, to the react, uh, reactor uh, uh, you know to, for, to cause a chemical reaction it will tell you the conditions at which those reactants should be the conditions of the reactor so that you can get the state and the condition of the product so this technology aspect ICs okay Open my eyes that you can actually do things faster, cheaper, easier, and better. So, why I said all that? I have a degree in chemical engineering, but I can tell you that the world we are in right now, in the fourth industrial revolution, will require that you don't just get degrees, you try to get certification because certification will actually give you some form of authority in getting some things done. All right? getting some things done. Did you get some certifications in today's world to make sure that you are very good in that field that you want to conquer with enormous specialization, enormous specialization. So learning in old fashion might not be, might, might be good for knowledge sake, but might not be good for the future sake. So the we need to understand that for us to move to the future that we desire, we need to be able to embrace some of the digital skills that I'm talking about. 
to embrace some of the scope of intelligences so that we can be relevant. We can be relevant to today's world uh, and also make a great impact in our world today. I can remember when I was in secondary school, Air Force Military School precisely, um, we had in GSS3 that time business studies. Business studies is a combination of four subjects or so, and one of it was typewriting. And those um, early times of uh, typewriting, we usually go to the front of a typewriter and then, you know, ASDF uh, column and you drag the thing like this, you know. And that was good at that time. But at that time, a, a lot of secretaries were very valuable. Right now, receptionist secretaries are not the top of town. So we need to understand that we need to upgrade and get ourselves some digital skills because right now, just dictating it to your laptop will just type the letter for you. Okay? And on, we need to understand that the world has changed. And when you refuse to evolve and change, you find out that you can get to get yourself extinct and you don't have the cutting edge to compete or to be relevant in today's world. Facebook. Facebook was founded in February, February 4, 4th of February uh, 2004 and it was done by a youth who was so, just a dropout of school and what he had te technology as his passion and he created Facebook and today you can see what Facebook is causing, the social media is causing. If not of Facebook, a lot of our churches will have not been able to stream their services. Uh, there's a lot of engagement going on. There's a lot of connection going on. Yes, it's digital. It cannot be compared to meeting face to face. Just like I wish I was in City Harvest Church talking to you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but thank God that there's technology uh, and I'm getting to connect with you um, for via this medium, uh, video medium, okay? So Facebook turned the face of social media around completely. Google, Google was founded in 4th of September uh, 1998, and today Google is making a lot of impact after the inventions of computer and internet. Now the question is this, will Jesus use technology? Will Jesus use Twitter? Will Jesus use Facebook? Will Jesus use a laptop? Will Jesus use some of the technologies like TV or whatever we, uh, we have, we are used to uh, in today's world? But what I will tell you from the little I've studied about Jesus from the pages of the scriptures, Jesus actually used the technology of his days. You could see that he wore sandals, he wore clothes, he went through, uh, through sheep, Okay, he, 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 was, he used the currency at that time, he, he used the donkey, he used quite a lot of things that were available at that first industrial revolution. So we need to acknowledge that the fourth industrial revolution, which is the technology, ICT, uh, cyber systems, smart infrastructures, has come to stay and we need to understand the terrain at which to operate in them and get the benefit for life and mankind. So, I was going to tell you another story. My children, after the, uh, the event of the pandemic about eight months ago, my children could not go to school and um, because of social distancing and the, the rising case of COVID-19 and the school administrators had to do their school online. Okay, two of them are in school and one is in secondary school. The second one is in primary school. The one in secondary school, see right from when he was young he uh, embraced technology so fast that um, when he was young he could record um, programs on the DSTV Explorer and so what am I saying is that now schooling has now been online so our children our youth need to understand that we can stay in the comfort of our houses and get edu edu educated we can be in the comfort of our houses and do our job. You know, I, I, I was sometimes, I, 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 my, my daughter's school is so fantastic. The module, module platform was so, I mean, they will make you go through some things that you think is technology. No, they will make you go through it over and over again. And I know the reason why they are doing that kind of thing is because they want you to, they'll do classwork, uh, do homework, they'll do classwork again, they'll do e-notes, 
you can, and you know e note you, you have the note you write it you upload and then they do quite a lot of things why because they want the children to get educated now the fact that you are in, in lockdown is a golden opportunity to leverage on technology to upgrade yourself so that when this whole pandemic disruption is over you will not be lost because the truth of us is that after the COVID-19, a lot of things will be lost. A lot of businesses will be lost. A lot of things will be affected. But the truth of us is that what you want to gain will only be gained if you are digitally empowered by technology. Imagine the people who are on social media. All right, social media is a billions on Facebook. 1.3 billion of Facebook. So we need to understand that technology has come to stay. What are the benefits of technology to your youth? It makes things convenient, okay, like over to be like those days when I was trying to look at scriptures, I would go on the card copy and be checking for these verses uh, from Genesis Revelation. Right now, from the eSword, I just click on the search button. Scripture, if I'm looking for anything on my, on my computer, it's very easy. You know, it, and even the Amazon Kindle is so bad, it's so good. That if I'm looking for a word in all the books in my um, Amazon Kindle, it's very easy. You know, after reading books, you all want to go back to them to refresh in, to update yourselves and things like that. So it's very convenient. It's also very transparent. It's very it's easier, it's cheaper, it's faster, it's better. It gives you a good experience of what you should have done in eight years, in eight months. Okay, okay, it also helps your brand, okay, and it also helps you with. Uh, it is a good innovation all right you can learn anything online you can learn anything on youtube you can learn anything digitally you can upgrade yourself to whatever level you want okay there are quite a lot of free courses from john Hopkins university or, 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 or other universities of the world that you can stay in the comfort of your own just make sure you have data you have internet and you want to go through those courses to upgrade yourself i must tell you that after this pandemic is over there will be a demand of some of these skills that i'm um I, i'm um about now the, the most most of our churches that never live streamed now needed some of the youth who are very good in some of these digital skills so we need um, to be to have this hard work despite that technology is bringing some form of laziness some form of uh, distraction because the internet world is very noisy as you go into the internet world if you don't have a goal you don't be lost so uh, get a goal get something you want to achieve in that um, um, world that you are getting into all right get so that i don't get polluted you don't get distracted you don't get addicted or, or lack uh, interest in what you went to the internet to search out for all right um then the, the kind of jobs to get uh, uh you know to that's like the jobs of the future i just wanted to mention that so that we understand that the world what we call the future is now and if you are going to be relevant to the future you have to do something now so the jobs of the future require a lot of uh, digital skills uh, skills that will make you relevant uh, make you more productive skills that that will, that, that will help you um, achieve more with less effort because sure about is that the knowledge and the skills that brought you here will not take you there all right you need to make sure that you must keep on learning keep on educating yourself okay jobs of the future like data analyst okay um, systems administrator IT administrator network uh, uh, programming designers internet of things now security guard might be outdated because there will be more CCTVs on our streets on our houses right now a lot of computer related designers uh, market research analysts financial analysts uh, quite a lot of all this I mean digital skills who have come to say and we must be able to get I mean, remember those days, those days when I gave my lecture there was no phone uh, the, the, the phone that we had was this 09 was the, the, um, mobile the landline but in the event of um, telecommunication in 2001 that helped a, a robust of um, that industry a, a explosion of that industry and that helped a lot of um, um, connection people can now stay talk to anybody around the world um, do quite a lot of things on their smartphone and things like that so please as you go 
don't give yourself the excuse that their schools are shut down social distancing, distancing is there but you can get to stay in your um there's a lot of free courses maybe uh the leadership of the of the youth um group uh we can talk i can send quite a lot of links for you to learn free things you know small small free free things that uh, will help you in the future I want to wrap it up here uh, because I know time has gone and I know you might have one or two questions. Uh, please feel free uh, to send across some of your questions for me so that I'm able to answer. I know that whatever you're going through, you are not going through it alone. You're not going through it alone. I repeat again, you are not going through it alone. Reverend Abraham is there, he's a father. And we are all here. We are going to make sure that you make uh, a great impact for God. You make a great impact for yourself. You have a way at which you're making impact and making yourself relevant in the course of things that we are living today. All right? That's my alarm. I wanted to do this in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So please feel free to get me your questions and that will help us to discuss further. I wish I was, I was coming to see you guys in City Abbey's Church, but permit that this comes your way um, to just let you know that technology is very, very important uh, in the life of a youth. I've been able to share my experiences. I wish I can go on and on, but I want to stay within the time that's allotted for me. Um, feel free for us to discuss further and see how God will help us achieve great things for him. Can I pray a prayer for you as I round, round up today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your message. We thank you for your word that has come to um, inspire your people and motivate them to good works. We ask that, Father, every one of them who is listening to me today, I ask that their destiny will find expression. We ask that the enemy will not steal whatever seeds, whatever seeds that have been sown in their hearts. The enemy will not take, the fire of the air will not take every of these good seeds that have been sown in their heart. I ask that, Father, all these words that have been sown, we ask that it will bring hundredfold in the name of Jesus. I ask from the depth of my heart that every one of these youth will not fall by the wayside in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of these youth of City of a Church and the global world entirely, I ask that they will begin to do remarkable things for God. They begin to do extraordinary things for God. They will know more than their teachers. They will do things that human mind cannot comprehend because they have the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all your, what you have done through the church and through the leadership of the church. Thank you, and we bless them for all the good work they have been doing to us to help, to help us to see how we are established in Christ. Thank you, Father. We give all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for allowing me to come to your space again. And I also, also want to thank Reverend Abraham Ajola. You mean so much to me. Thank you for all the encouragement. Thank you for all the words of wisdom and guidance over the years. And I thank you also for your leadership and how you have been able to you have been able to live out your life to us to see in humility and uh, and, and, and and wisdom. Thank you so much. Till I see you again next time. God bless you. And from my depth of my heart, I love you.